We're live, baby. We're here. What's up? What up, Austin? Oh, not much. How you doing, man? Oh, just chilling on a Saturday. I uh, I can't believe we're finally doing this. I know, dude. And you're rocking out the hoodie. I, I love it. Literally God. Literally God. Yeah. Um. Yeah. This is. By the way, this is Austin's merch, basically for Commons. So, <laughs> yeah. someone, someone at Kroger. I was at Kroger last week, and they said I was uh, walked up to the register and stuff, and he was like. I said, oh, can you give me that? He goes, I don't know. You're literally God. Can you? And I was like, well, <laughs> that's not, not exactly the meaning of that. That's not what that means. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah. Um, what, are you, what about you? What are you doing? Well, you know, just uh, dealing with kids, three of them. Um, I told them not to interrupt, but I don't know. But we'll see what happens. There Hud- may be some children running in in a minute. Hudson's next door. So if you hear screaming, that's him. Nice. Um, dude, what are we doing right now? What I don't we, know. What is this? <laughs> yeah, the Bro Dad Podcast. What do you mean? What is this? It's where yeah. two bros who are also dads have come together to to just entertain the world. Uh, yes, people have been asking. Yeah. Many people, various kinds of people. Many people. people lots out of there. people. They've been asking. <laughs> and we're finally going to deliver. Oh, hello. Yeah. We're going to deliver. <laughs> um, <laughs> nice. So yeah, I think uh, you know we just had this idea. Well, one, Austin lives in. New York City, and I don't anymore. Um, I, I'm gonna ins- yeah, I'm gonna insert the boo. Um, and so we we just miss each other and wish we could catch up more. So we said, hey, why don't we just catch up over a podcast, uh, talking about everything from being dads to being bros to being musicians. I don't know everything, just life, man. Well, and and also like every time we catch up on the phone, we just make each other laugh just constantly. And I, I just thought that. You know, it would be fun to let other people in on our conversations and like catching up. And um, the other day I was like, yeah, well, I'll, you know what? I'll just I'll let you know. I'll keep you updated. And it was like <laughs> as if I wasn't going to talk to you for weeks. But like yep. th- I literally called you three hours later and I was like, so update. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep you updated. Talk to you next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, but yeah. And also like when when you were in New York before you were a trader, mm. um, you uh <laughs> You, you like you would hang out with me or like we would be hanging out and people would always just talk about how fun and hilarious it was. I, I can't remember who it was. Somebody said like, I've laughed more like just hanging out with you guys for 20 minutes than I have like in the last two months or something like that. Um, and so, yeah, I just think it's, it's fun when we hang out and it would be cool to let other people hang out with us. Heck yes. So uh, we're, Guys, bear with us. We're just we're working on the format of this podcast, but it's going to be pretty loose at first. I think we're going to find our our rhythm. But um, we decided that we'd introduce each other. So this is an intro episode. So talking about who is Hunter and who is Austin. Um, Austin, do you want me to go first? Do you want to go first? We're going to we're literally he's not going to tell you who he is. He doesn't need to tell you that. I'm going to tell you who he is. (laughs) And and, and you're going to tell me who I am. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought I think that was like understood already, but I'm glad that you explain that more thoroughly (laughs) yeah so you go first you can you can intro me first okay i'll intro you first okay so uh this is uh my best friend hunter foreman and um he is one of those people that as soon as you meet him you know that there's something a little off about him but it's like off in a good way you know he's like well he is not like anyone else i've ever met um he loves music He loves producing things. He loves his wife, Madeline. He loves his son, Hudson. And uh, he is super into coffee. And so pretty much you can bet that if you're talking to this dude at some point, he's going to randomly interrupt mid-sentence and just start talking about coffee spontaneously. Um, Most of our catch-ups actually involve talking about coffee and community and stuff like that. So um yeah if you're lucky enough to meet hunter um then just count your blessings because he's super fun dude to hang out with wow that was incredible yeah. um i don't think mine's gonna be that that was very eloquent i was just a good that was a good sentence structure there mm. um, yeah yeah singular run on that, that was great <laughs> uh thank you austin um yeah so i would say okay who's austin austin west is also a dad he's uh he has three kids though, so he's gonna. I'm a need professional a, dad. You're a, still yeah. you're maintaining your amateur status yeah, at the I'm, moment. I'm but, a rookie. I'm literally yeah. just gotten to the league. Um, but he's been there for how old is Colby? Seven. Yeah. 
So seven years. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, Austin is someone who really does care for his family. He's always concerned about them. Um, he is, I would say he's my best friend. I mean, we're talking weekly, um, especially when I lived in New York. Uh, I just felt, I just didn't feel like I've met anyone that's like got me, you know, like you, you have friends, but someone who really understands like, you know, how people think. I don't know. I just, so, you know, I think Austin is someone who also, I mean, we bonded over music, like he said. Um, he is a minister in, in the city. He's been there for how long? Six years? Five, five, six years? Uh, yeah, this is our seventh year. So in, yeah. I think in August, we'll mark like a full seven years that we've been here. So the kind of rule is, I think, well, some people say 10 and some people say five, but I mean, basically to me, once you, five years, if you lived in New York five years, you can kind of consider yourself a New Yorker for like a, for real New Yorker. So, uh, and those who don't know New York, it's, it's a very difficult place as far as like, you know, just a lot of life stuff, but you know, especially having kids. So Austin's very sacrificial of his time and his money and, um, and just his, you know, gift of uh, ministry. So he's laboring in New York and, um, you know, everyone should really like support him and, and look into that. And yeah, he's, 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 he's a hustler. You have to be a hustler in New York. So he's got that hustling attitude to whatever it takes to pay the bills and, and, uh, have fun while doing it. So I'm yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah. Glad to call you friend, buddy. Awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah. Now everyone knows how cool we both are. Yes. Hopefully. So. I mean, I don't, I think we made that clear. <laughs> I mean, I hope, <laughs> well, I hope we did. I mean, at this point, you know, if you didn't already know, now, you know, um, sweet. So that's us. Um, man, how did we meet? We, so I don't, a lot, of, I'm going to be honest with you. The reason I wanted to talk about going over how me and Austin met is because my memory which it never really does this to me, but it's failing me. And a lot of times I think I, I think I might have the wrong story about how we met. So we're going to tell the story of how we met and compare it to each other and see if they're actually right. Yeah. I'll go first since I'm the one less sure. I think, yeah, okay. I think you're probably more sure. But like the very first time we met, not like the first time we hung out or like I'm thinking like when did we very first say like, hey, what's up? I'm Hunter. And you're like, yeah, I'm Austin. Like when was that? Um I know it was the year that I moved to New York, which was 2019, um, pre the world exploding. Um, I, I want to say it had to do something with church because we were both in the church planning world. But I, I believe, was it at Queen's Church? Was it a Queen's Church thing that it was like a night? It was like a Queen's Church worship night or something. I mean, and, maybe that's not, I mean, I remember a different time, but maybe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I so I, my, my recollection is that I was leading or no, I don't even think I was leading worship. I think I was just going to this young adult Queens church, something. And, and you were there. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's really, it's very foggy. Yeah. So I remember, um, and maybe this was after because, you know, you ever meet those people in your life and you know, there's probably like 15 to 20 people that I know that would be on this list of like you met them, but it kind of seems like you've known them your whole life. It de- like the like time, your relationship with that person just kind of stops time. Like yeah. when you're saying, oh, yeah, it was 2019, like that simultaneously for me sounded like way less time than I've known you yeah, and way more time. But then like also it feels like I've always known you like to some I sound like I'm trying to like no pick, no yeah pick, I mean pick you up I'm, in a bar I'm, or something. I'm married, bro. Hey, Hunter. Uh, I feel like I've always known you, and it may like be weird for me to say, but <laughs> I'm gonna say it. Yeah. Uh. So, but yeah. So what I remember is you came to a Commons NYC event, which was like a, a a rooftop movie night or something. And I don't know if that was like the first time we hung out or the first time we talked or like the first time I literally ever saw you. But I I remember because you and Shannon came. And I don't yes. know. Is that like the first night? Yeah. I don't know. But. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And now that I'm, I remember this because I remember, yes, I remember coming to your house, your apartment building. And, uh, I remember I didn't know any, I mean, me and Shannon were just like, Oh, you know, we, we just moved here. We don't know anyone. Let's try to go like find some people our age to like, you know, that are in Christian ministry and stuff in New York. Yeah. So, so we went and, uh, I remember being like, okay, walked up to your, your, your apartment, knocked on your door. And it was like, 
And the way it was advertised, which is in Austin fashion, you just have faith. Like it's this is a big event, you know. It's gonna and happen. There's gonna be like tons of people, and so I'm gonna be like, oh, cool, yeah, you know, like I'll just we'll just hang to the background and like just kind of feel it out, and um, <laughs> and I like knock on your apartment door, and Haley opens the door, and she's like, oh hey, and I'm like, it's just Haley, like. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I remember this now. You it was guys me, were like the first one there. Yeah. yeah, it was like me, Shannon, and Haley. And she's like, oh, Austin's getting stuff set up. You guys could just h- hang out like on the couch. And she's like, I remember Colby, like Colby and Sawyer were doing baths. Like she was doing bath time. Yes. <laughs> it was, it was so just good. like, and she's like, okay, here's the so kids. And, yeah. uh, and then, but like, it was kind of awkward because like, again, never met you or Haley in my life. And she's like, yeah, just hang out. And you were like, it was like a solid, like 10 to 15 minutes that we're just sitting on your couch being yeah. like, we're new here. We're, this is our first She's like time. sharpening kitchen knives in the background. Like, oh, he'll be here soon. Yeah. Trust Don't me. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. So, and then, uh, yeah. So you were doing the rooftop on your, you guys have yeah, a rooftop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's like a whole production. That's like, you know, extension cord, uh, you know, projector, like, furniture it, yeah it's a whole thing mm-hmm. so yeah no, cool I, I remember you guys have a roof rooftop that like basically o- overlooks the entire city which is you know not, not to brag on you but yeah it's no cool. well i like how earlier you were like yeah and it, i know you didn't mean this but you're like yeah in true austin fashion it was and then like you described like overselling and yeah over hyping yeah like immediately <laughs> it, it, but it, like that's this if that's not bad enough like in true austin fashion like that's what i'm known for well that, that should have been in my introduction like he overhypes, he overhypes everything, everything and undersells um, big time uh no uh i i don't think i don't think you undersell it i think it it's a lot of stuff is you have to overhype it because otherwise people won't come in new york you have to really overhype stuff yeah, they're well, like, especially oh, wait, college students. A 60 you know. minute train ride? I don't know. Yeah, college uh, students are really flaky too. So you really gotta, you know, <laughs> yeah. sell like how awesome it's going yeah. to be. Um, um it was a yeah, good night. No, and fun. people came, people end up coming. Uh, but yeah, that, yeah, that was later. the first time. Yes. Well, I maybe may I, yeah, I, I'm having this image of the, that of his worship night, but maybe, maybe that was like right after we met the first time. Maybe that's like when you fell in love with me. That's like the first we time. met. We met on my rooftop, but you didn't fall in love with me until the worship yeah. night. Like that's that, when I. That's when I knew. Yeah, that's when. <laughs> that's when I knew. Uh, um, I I feel like as part of our introduction, and just for people who don't fully know us, we should definitely tell the story to kind of just paint the picture of like who we are and our personality types. We should paint the picture of the two bros being dudes photo shoot. And maybe even we could like share some of those photos that have been archived for so oh, long. I don't yes. know. I, that's um, a that's a tough one. Let me. Yeah. So basically, uh, we. I'm gonna have let you some, talk while I go find this. Yeah, yeah. So we have some friends. I actually have it uh, archived in my photo library um, to post along later uh, if we want. Oh, do you, can you um, share your screen? Um, or you, you want me to do it? You want me to find it? Uh, you go ahead and find it. If you okay. Want. You want me, do you want me to tell you the date that it was? Yeah, yeah. Maybe What's help you with the date. the date. Um, let me look. Albums. Let's see. It looks like well, of course it was this day. It was when we had nothing better to do. October 3rd, 2020. Classic. Yeah, we were stuck inside. That's well, okay, so kind of prep them. You know, this might be disturbing yeah. for some people. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, for some people it might be a little disturbing. Um, essentially, we had uh, a couple of friends who are also really good friends. Um, their names are Hannah Jane and Allie. And they had taken this photo shoot together. And it was like very, very vogue, like very professional. Yeah. Um, and like on one hand, we thought it was cool. But on the other hand, we also thought it would be really funny if we did the same type of photo shoot, but not like m- like not masculine vogue shot, like literally try to find the exact clothes that they had and try to do the exact poses that that they posed um right. like identically and, yeah and so Haley, she was the uh the the what would you say the photography director of trying to get us like into these same exact poses that they were in and it was hilarious but i, I really feel like if there's one thing that really encompasses like who we are as people and how far we'll go to just like get a laugh and have fun it would be these pictures <laughs> like 100 percent without a doubt like um, I don't know how many of you are 21 Pilots fans, but 
um, the most recent live stream that they did uh, was for their 10 year anniversary of Vessel. And at one point they were accepting uh, a Grammy award and uh, Tyler just took his pants off, had like dress clothes on and just in boxers. And as soon oh, as yeah. he did, Josh took his pants off and they went up there pantsless. And uh, somebody asked Tyler, like, how did you know Josh would go with you? How did you know that he just wouldn't let you, you know, be in boxers on your own? And he said, well, because I knew I'd found a friend who would commit to the bit. And like, as soon as, <laughs> as soon as he said that, I was like, oh my gosh, it made me think of these, these photos that we took. So um classic classic hunter and austin story for sure dude i can't i i I can't remember my instagram password oh my gosh (laughs) i've just been trying to so bad that entire time you're talking i'm just typing trying to guess the password so Um, um, we can just post them yeah we'll post them we'll post them in the show notes yeah 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 Yeah, we'll post the link in the show notes um so this podcast is going to be like obviously you can listen to it on like podcast stuff, but you can also probably going to get on YouTube um, and we're going to post probably clips of some reels. So we're trying to up the quality. So obviously if there's any feedback you'll have on how this is going or like what, what would make this, you know, as far as everything else, the production go better, let us know. Yeah. Maybe getting a stronger, um, like boom, mount, a, a boom mount, mic. Yeah. yeah. Stronger yeah. boom mic for yeah. your, for your golden. Can microphone. you hear it? Can you hear it when I'm, t- when I'm adjusting it? No, no, no. I can okay. only hear your voice. It, it just looks like, okay. you know, in 2020 when we would wear masks and every two seconds you would be like, yeah, yeah. Trying to pull above your nose. Um, yeah. how, how's it going to New York city, New York city at, with COVID and everything? Yeah. I mean, it, it's a lot better. Uh, the schools are, are still really like, I don't even know the the best word. Um, just ca- I don't know if they're cautious or they're just doing what the city tells them or like they don't want to get in trouble from regulations. But I mean, we just went to a performance of Colby's yesterday for Black History Month, uh, which was really, really cool. Um, but like they they didn't want to check everyone's vaccination status. And they had done that like at the end of last year. They They had a big performance and mm-hmm. they weren't letting people in who weren't vaccinated. So this time they're like, well, forget checking vaccination. Just everybody wears a mask. And it was like people put the mask on and then got an auditorium and sit down and just ripped it off. And it was just kind of like, I mean, how like how long do we have to go on? You know, yeah. and I like I understand being cautious and all those things, but it feels like a lot of it is just a facade, you know? Yeah. Do you um, think most people are like done? You like done with it in New York? Like even the people who were the staunchest mask wearers in 2020? Yeah. I mean, I think people have been done with it you know, for a while. And I, and I think too, like even, even before people were like done with it to the point of like not wearing masks, I think a lot of people were done with it in the sense of like, I'll wear a mask to be courteous to others. But I personally don't think that this is helping anything. Right. I, I feel like people were, were at that point, maybe even in line with like what the rest of the country was. Yeah. Um, but New York is just a place where you, you very much get, become accustomed quickly to sacrificing and giving up your own preferences and your own luxuries and your own comforts just to help like the collective feel of the neighborhood or the city. Right. People yeah. understand like what's best for me isn't what's best for everyone all the time. So, right. Yeah. Because I mean, I'm in Louisiana now, South Louisiana, and you know, we have a house that's like distanced by like multiple yards feet from other like separate houses. We have, you know, we're fenced in, that's just like not the case in New York. Your literally buildings are built touching each other. Yeah. So like you can be next door hitting your like bedroom wall, touching a like literally touching the next building. They would hear you in the next building. So oh, yeah. People are just on top of each other. Yeah. You had you had some unique experiences with hearing people. <laughs> yes. My my over. we had we loved our apartment in New York, but um it was like an awesome deal. But our neighbors they like to uh, verbally abuse their kids and have their pit bulls fight each other. So we've heard some stuff, you know, you're just really close. You just, everyone's living are, the same life. Are you sure they weren't verbally abusing their pit bulls and having their kids fight each other? I mean, it's like coming through the wall. So maybe it was, like, I, I could have got those two things mixed up. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, yeah. Man. It's good. But yeah. So New York's good. Um, man. Yeah. I just, uh, I'm glad we're we're finally doing this podcast. Any anything else we need to I, we should I think talk I think about? we do need yeah, we need to tell one more story because this whole like first episode is about just people getting to know us and who yeah, we yeah, are, yeah. right? Yeah. Um I, I think you really need to 
and we can tell a story that makes me look bad too if you want but you already said like i, I already did the, yeah already deliver so deprecated yeah um so we we can still to this day we cannot go to get seafood anywhere in new york and haley go oh do you think it has maggots in it <laughs> and so you need to tell the the crawfish story mm -hmm. i need all the pizzazz uh, i yeah, want yeah, you yeah. to take me back as if we were there I need yeah. the same emotion just so people can understand a little bit more about you as a, as a person as well. Right. Okay. Well, that, great. Thank you for thinking of me, Austin. Yes. So, um, I'm from South Louisiana, Lake Charles sulfur area. Literally our, the town I'm in is named after an element on the periodic table sulfur. Um, and boy, does it smell like it? Um, it truly does. There's a sulfur mine. Like they actually mine the, the element sulfur. So like, I don't know, it's a thing, but sometimes like randomly you'll get like the city will smell like sulfur, sulfuric acid. So anyway, um, growing up here in South Louisiana, um, crawfish, seafood, Cajun is all just like embedded in the culture and in the food and in everything. So growing up, you know, an event you would go to is a crawfish boil. Like, you know, family, we do it every Mother's Day. It's like the Super Bowl. In yeah. Louisiana, yes. right? It's like, it's, the, it's like, it brings people together. Yeah. It, like people think about it for weeks. There's competitions around. Oh, yeah. Like who, it's a thing. Who right? has so, the best, you know, because there's different recipes. Who has the best seasoning? Who can boil the best crawfish? Yeah. There's bragging rights, you know, at stake here. Yeah. So, you know, grow up going to crawfish boils, you know, you go to the restaurants, most, you know, Cajun or like, res you know, restaurants, some do literally they have restaurants that are their crawfish huts. Okay. They make enough money just during crawfish season. They're closed the rest of the year. So crawfish it's like fireworks season. everywhere. Yes, else, right. Exactly. Like, like fireworks pop up crawfish stand pops up. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, same names for like the dishes too, probably like, can I get the firecracker and the, can I, can I get the, uh, sparklers, the, the <laughs> sparkling heads? Um, so yeah, you know, so anyway, one, one birthday of mine, um, when I was, when we were living in New York, probably what was this like two years ago? Um, but, oh, by the way, I moved back a year, actually right at a year ago, we moved, uh, to Louisiana, um, um, that's we, not important. Nobody cares yeah, about that. Yeah, it's, it's okay. Uh, just, I just had to confess that, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but just so the timetable, but so, so one of the birthdays we went to, I was like, man, I just want crawfish on my birthday because my birthday falls March 19th is dead center of crawfish season. That's like what, that's generally what I do for my birthday every year. And so, you know, Austin, Haley, me, Madeline, you know, um, we were like, let's, let's go find some crawfish. Let's do it. You know? So we go to this, we go to this, we finally find this place that it's like, yeah, we have crawfish. And what was it called? It's a, it was downtown. I, I would rather not put the, the restaurant. Yeah, let's not, <laughs> yeah, let's not blast the restaurant. It was somewhere. Yeah, no. Uh, it was somewhere I, in, in Manhattan. Yeah, downtown I can't remember, I can't remember the name of it anyway, but maybe that's it was like a, It was like, it was like a, a more fancy, like Joe's Crab Shack. Imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. That was the vibe. Yeah. Like, you know, netting, fish netting, boats hanging from the ceiling mm -hmm. and stuff. So it felt right. You know, it felt like, oh, this is a Cajun. Like, this is could be right, you know. So I order crawfish. And, you know, generally at a crawfish place in Louisiana, you're like, hey, yeah, give me like five or six pounds of crawfish. And like, yeah, no no biggie. We're, we're boiling like 500 back there. So no mm -hmm. big. Well, and here if we like, run out, we'll just scoop some more up outside. Yeah, we'll like, just dig them out the dirt. Yeah. So, so here, though, they I think they had five pounds total in the entire restaurant on hand, right? So they didn't sell it like by the pound. They just sold like a seafood platter. So you could get a little bit of crawfish, a little bit of crab, shrimp. I don't know. They just put like a platter together. So but it wasn't a platter when they brought it out. So you right. When they brought it out. Yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway, I'm like pumped, ready for the, I'm like, yep, crawfish is on its way. They come out with, um, with his bag. It's, it looks like, um, on Finding Nemo, when the with the fish, when you which you carry a fish in, when you buy it from the pet store, one of those kind of bags, and uh, so he comes out with the crawfish in the bag, like wrapped up, and he just plops that bag down on the table. And he's like, "There's your crawfish," you know. I was like, "Okay, that's kind of weird." Normally in Louisiana, they come out on a big platter and they're covered, and like you know, you just you take the platter off, and anyway, so like weird. So in Louisiana, they had on their tables this this matting where you could just. You know, it's like newspapers, so it didn't get dirty. So I literally took the bag up upside down, emptied all the crawfish onto the table because yeah. I, no, listen. 
<laughs> That's what we do in Louisiana. No, 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 but mind you, everyone else in the restaurant has the bag. They're like, they're like literally reaching in and yeah. taking out little pieces. Of yeah, they're they're. Hunter, by- he just like look and just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, they had like the people at the restaurant, were, you know, fancy New Yorkers with their. They had like the white napkin hanging from their chest, and you know they were using forks and stuff. And I'm like, whatever. I literally it, it, imagine a bag like this. I just went dumped it all out on the table. It's, it's juice gone everywhere. And when I looked, it looked, I swear to you, I swear to you, it looked identical to maggots, uh, like little maggots all in the crawfish. And um, so as soon as I dumped it out, I'm a verbal, I just say what I think most of the time. Me and you are the same in that way. So we're just processing out loud. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, I literally <laughs> verbally, I'm like, what is this maggots? And, and the uh, guy is the guy from the, the waiter. The waiter. the waiter is standing right behind him as he says this, and <laughs> and he goes, uh, "Can I can I help you with something, sir? No, is he's there like, something oh, wrong? Is something wrong? Like, yeah, he was so offended. Yeah. Um, so it turns out it was corn. Like, because uh, in crawfish poison, Louisiana, we literally take a whole like mini corn on the cob and you just roll, you know, boil the whole thing. But here it was like they shaved the corn and they mixed it all into the so. It was still wrong, but it wasn't that wrong. It wasn't <laughs> it was maggots. Wrong. It wasn't maggots yeah. wrong. <laughs> so um, anyway, that was very embarrassing. But dude, actually, I have actually think I have a, like a disorder um, when I go to public restaurants because every time I try to say something negative and I'm not even trying to like, I'm not trying to get the waiter's attention at all. I'm just like complaining to like whoever I'm eating with, my family or Madeline or about anytime I say something offensive, it just happens to be that our waiter's like right next right to me. Right there, yeah. Or I'll be like, you know, Oh, oh my gosh, when are they going to finally give us our refills? And it's like they're walking by and I'm but I'm talking so loud. So anyway, I think there's something that every time it that happens to me. So Yeah. Was I surprised? Not really. Were you surprised and Haley surprised? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely <laughs> surprised. So she goes, "Yeah, we so we, you know, we're at the um the Qatar Airways Club before the Nets game." Um not oh, because actually we're, dropped that yeah, in. Yeah. Not because we're filthy rich or anything because we got lucky and won some tickets, right? And she gets the seafood thing and she was like, oh, well, she sees the seafood boil. She goes, oh, you think that has maggots in it? It's just like every, <laughs> it will always live on in any seafood cuisine that we have ever. Yeah. yeah. That is comment there, is, there is, is immediately following. Yeah. Do you think it has maggots? <laughs> so That happens, man. You know, it's like you go to the horse races expecting to see dogs racing. It's just why would I set myself up for failure? It's not going to happen. It's not going to be the yeah. same, you know? Yeah. But um, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't great. Yeah. The bag was ah, that that was the weirdest thing, I think. Even even the maggot looking corn was not as weird as just the, the just it the came, bag. Yeah, it, it came just... out in a like a sopping wet bag. Yeah. Yeah. It very was weird. weird. And I made very a mess. Weird. That's he was cleaning up my mess when he that's why he heard me. Because I dumped the thing out and all yeah, the and it, like and splattered all, the all... Floor. <laughs> uh he's like I'm literally scooping this up for you as you trash talk <laughs> the food that you just dumped everywhere. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's like, what do you expect? You take a little boy from Louisiana who grew up not wearing shoes and put him in elite Manhattan. Like, that's it how it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Yeah, <laughs> it just doesn't work. It's so dumb. Well, shoot, man. Uh, anything else on the brain? Anything about dadding or, you know, anything else we need to talk about before we kind of wrap it up? I mean, I don't. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, you know, first one was kind of get to know us. Uh, you know, if people want to stick around after this, like, just complete you know insanity god help them them with their uh seafood stories then awesome we can talk about dadding it up living in new york coffee all the kinds of stuff you know yeah man uh we're gonna be here guys recording this whether you're listening or not because we got to catch up we got to talk to each other we miss each other uh hey i'm gonna be in new york next weekend me and madeline yeah you are so um dude um we should do the next one together like in the same room absolutely yes let's plan for that Sounds good. All right, man. Well, go dad it up. I'm going to go dad it up. And uh, I guess we'll catch y'all next time. Yep. Later. Later.